This Lcast is recorded in front of a live streaming audience. Welcome to another episode of The Cellcast Reaction. Joining me today is a man who, well, he's on a journey to look for his brother. Welcome, Jacob. Uh, man, it'd be like if Luigi would just stop getting lost or getting captured by Bowser every once in a while, we would have this problem. <laughs> Technically, it's princess peach who usually gets captured that not is luigi. true that is true luigi's actually been the hero of a couple games that's what i understand the luigi's mansion series true where he actually saves mario's behind from ghosts that is cool actually to, actually to hear so why <laughs> thank you let me use our co-host a man who i uh, take one <laughs> i had it in my head i know you're, you're welcome know. patrons um, I had it in my head. It went blink. I get it. I get it. Uh, all right. So, all right. So, make sure you can hear that. <laughs> it's heard. It's heard. Okay. Why? Thank you. Let me introduce our co-host, a man who simply can't resist throwing a blue shell at somebody anytime he gets passed up in traffic. Welcome, Drew. So the problem with the blue shell is. It only hits the person in first place. Right. But you only ever get the blue shell when you're so far back in the pack that uh, it wouldn't do you personally any good. So anytime you get it, you just go ahead and throw it because what's it going to hurt? That's true. I'm just saying, there's an issue with the blue shell that it, I, I get why it's there, but at the same yeah. time, it's perfectly useless for the person who has it. True. Unless you're playing on uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with only blue shell items. Ooh. That's a certain brand of chaos. I can imagine. But anyway, uh, yes, today we are going to be reacting to the brand new movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which I think we've both been looking forward to for yes. a little bit. Yes. Uh, ever since they they announced the movie, they started talking about casts mm -hmm. and getting like um, like voice actors talking about the roles. Yeah. And like finally getting to see trailers. And seeing more and more trailers, and now the movie's out already, and getting to see uh, little glimpses of what people think of the film, uh, I am super excited to you know watch this film in theaters, and just yeah, the Super Mario Bro Super Mario movie came out what like the, early? the original Super Mario Bros came out in movie came out in nineteen ninety. Five, I think. 95, 94, one of those. Could be completely wrong. It was uh, around the time, I think, of Super Mario World. I'll do a quick Google check. Yes. But anyways, it'd be like... Because I remember as a kid watch, or like watching my brothers and my cousin or just simply trying to play uh, the original Super Mario Brothers or 2 or 3 or All-Stars or... World. World, thank you. Um, but it'd be like just really enjoyable, really enjoyable games to, you know, and then, you know, I'm pro progressing throughout the years with Super Nintendo to, uh, the N64 to Dreamcast. Not, is it a Dreamcast? I'm sorry. It's not it. GameCube. GameCube. Yeah. Game the Dreamcast was Sega. Yeah, I know. I know. Blasphemy. I know. Uh, obviously Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. And, and you know, now went into the the Nintendo Switch and all that you know accessories and all that great stuff, but uh, N Mario has been a staple of Nintendo or video, the video game genre for decades, mm -hmm. and to finally because obviously they have done, um, they've done they obviously did a very poor adaptation with the film yes with the live action film years ago. Well, fun fact on that, mm. we are two months away from 19 the the original Mario Brothers films 30th anniversary what yeah first one came out on May 28th 1993 wow okay so <laughs> putting we're... that in pers to perspective wow distributed by Buena Vista Pictures <laughs> it was a Disney <laughs> film <laughs> technically it wasn't actually Disney it was uh 
Hollywood Pictures, which is owned by Disney, but whatever. Yeah, nuance. But I am Alan Silvestri did the music. That is true. He did, which is weird to think about. Yeah. So we're we're going into this film, and obviously everybody's got a lot of perspectives or a lot of thoughts on maybe Chris Pratt as Mario. Yeah. And he I, has I've, a bit been a bit controversial. A bit controversial. And I've mostly because he's in everything. Yeah, that is true. He is Chris Pratt. He's a really good actor. Um, and there again, like like Drew said, he's in everything now. Mm-hmm. But there have been s- s- the the controversy over casting Chris Pratt as Mario because be like, oh, he didn't sound like the the uh, the character from the games. And there was a large contingent of people who think that Charles Martinet, the mm-hmm. voice actor for Mario yes. from the video games, should have been playing Mario in this. And I really want you to stop and think of what that would mm-hmm. mean. The Mario voice, mm-hmm. as iconic as it is, do you really want it going on for two and a half hours? Probably not. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I, don't get me wrong. Love Charles Martinet. He's a great voice actor, but the voice he uses for Mario that he would need to use for this, I'm fairly certain would kind of grind yes. the eardrums after a while. Yes. Especially if he's also voicing Luigi. Yes. Because he does voice Luigi in the games also. Interesting. And so- Wario and Waluigi, but that, uh, they're probably not in the movie. Oh, you never know. Uh, so, uh, so I, I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine at work. Uh, he came in to get some stuff and we started talking, talking about movies and we talked, start, obviously started talking about this movie and, uh, he made, I mean, like he made a really good point where people have been like, oh, dismissing the film because Chris Pat isn't going to be able to do Mario, but he brought up a really good point. Like Heath Ledger, when they announced Heath Ledger yeah. was going to be the Joker, everyone was like, oh no, he couldn't do it. There's no way in earth. Be like we see that, and then you look at Michael Keaton as Batman when they announced his ki- when he was coming in as Batman Bruce Wayne, and people were losing their f- freaking minds saying, "But like he's a comedy actor, he's a romance actor, he can't do this." And Adam West wasn't. <laughs> that is true. I'm it's, just saying. It's 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 this notion. people people have this weird idea of. Uh-huh. It has to be this kind of certain person. Yeah, it, it has. It has to and, fit this diameter. And look, let's be honest. This movie is not a direct adaptation of the games. Yeah, it is a is based on them, mm-hmm. but it is just as based on them as say the Super Mario Brothers Super Show was, and that had Captain Lou Albano playing Mario. <laughs> An entirely different way of voicing the character yes. than he we've we've ever else heard him. So, yeah. I have withheld judgment on uh, Mario's cast, the choice for Mario, because we've had we've heard very little of his voice in the trailers. We've heard a bit, yeah. But and, and his voice, and, and it seems like it's gotten better the more I've listened to it. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm just getting more used to it. I don't know. But I've withheld judgment. I will make a final judgment call when we get back. Yes. But uh, he's not the only person in this. Uh, uh, I do want to go over some of the other people before we go head out. It. We got Anya Taylor Joy as Princess Peach. Mm-hmm. She sounded interesting. Yes, I agree. Uh, I'm trying to think of what she else she's been in that we may have seen. Uh, I've got the list. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the list. I see nothing else that I'm. Oh, she was in uh, the new, the New Mutants. That's a great movie to say she was in. Oh, isn't it? okay. She played Il- uh, Ileana Rasputin. Oh, okay. You know, um, yes. Colossus's sister. sister. <laughs> yes. Uh, they ma- I've, I have seen the New Mutants. They make no reference to this, though she does have her little dragon friend. Ah. In that movie. Uh, so I yeah, that, I thought that was Kitty Bride who had the little dragon friend. They traded it off, apparently. Oh, but. that's just a shame, a shame, a shame. She. Uh, Ileana had the dragon in the movie is what oh. I'm saying. Oh, okay. But anyway, uh, I've not really watched any of the rest of the movies on this list. That, Cause yeah, I definitely didn't see Playmobil the movie. Oh, okay. But uh, I think just from what I've seen from the trailers, I do like her, her, her voice in this. It looks yeah. like she might be an interesting take on the character. Okay. So what about Charlie day as Luigi? He sounds about as Luigi as I would expect. Oh, okay. If you're not going to do Charles Martinet, I think this fits. He has a little bit of that feel of, uh, oh, what's his name from the first from the live action movie? Mm. 
It's got a little bit of that feel. I cannot think of that actor's I got name. You. But uh, it feels more. It still feels like more like a modern rendition of the character. That's very much. Fil- that's the thing. A lot is you, you can tell they're being filtered through Illumination style, even though this is still a Nintendo property. Yeah. Uh, but let's get to the big one. I think Mo- we, both of us are looking forward oh, to course. Jack Black as Bowser. Oh, of course, of course. The 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 fact we like you have Jack Black, who is a a comedy actor. Yeah. For the most part. And he's playing this menacing titan of a you know of a villain within the uh, video game world. Yeah, and it, it's not uh, Hobson, uh, the guy who played in the the original Super. Uh, the original oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. Yes, I'm I'm drawing a fan. My apologies. That that's not really Bowser oh, in that one. That is, I know, but it, anyway, yeah, it's it's not really Bowser, but a new one. Granted. Granted, you have to remember when you're looking at that old 1993 movie, they had very little to go off of very. in terms of story. Right, right, right. This they have a little bit more to work off of, but they're still kind of doing their own original thing. Right. Uh, we're going to have Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming playing a lot of the rest of the Toads, but Probably. I don't know that for certain. Uh, Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing is Seth Rogen, from my understanding, is not doing a Donkey Kong voice. He is doing his voice. Oh. So this is going to definitely be Seth Rogen, Donkey Kong, not mm. Donkey Kong played by Seth Rogen. Right. So I don't know how that's going to work. Right. Uh, there's a couple other names on here, but I'm going to go ahead and skip them because they are the more minor characters, I think. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, honestly, from what I've seen, I mean, there's obvious references to Mario Kart. There's some re- op- references to the Donkey Kong Country series mm-hmm. and... Just going, going off that 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 a uh, uh, TV trailer that the the super that was at the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. that feel kind of makes me a little excited for this. Mm-hmm. The big question in my mind is: Is this going to be as good an adaptation as the Sonic the Hedgehog movies? That is a good question because the Sonic the Hedgehog movies, like we've discussed, were not direct adaptations of the stories either. They yeah. were a reinterpretation of that character for twenty for 2020 basically yeah as long as it has the heart like Mm. sonic does i I think this will be just as good the difference is that mario games have not really been bad in the past couple years like nintendo like sega's like sonic's has Mm -hmm. and so we this particular person's uh charles martinet's performance is so seared in the minds of most people since super mario 64 that that's going to cause some issues, I think. Yeah, there's also the fact that, like, some people are, it's more, it has to be exactly what my imagination is. Otherwise, yeah. it's it's that, almost like, it's that, almost like a toxicity. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be the game. But people it's don't not, understand it's it's an adaptation. A, it's not going to be the game. Of course. Get that out of your mind right now. Yeah. B, even if you're going off of those games, let's talk about the, the ones that Charles Martinet has performed in. Just the mainline Mario games. You got Super Mario 64. Mm-hmm. Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah. Super Mario Galaxy. Galaxy 2. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the new Super Mario Brothers games. Mm-hmm. And then uh, f- uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Plus, of course, what, seven or eight Mario Kart games? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, he knows the performance, but we're not talking about a lot of acting. That is actually Martin A., you know what I mean? Right. I mean, he did acting. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of what he's doing was like, uh, Mario's number one. Hoo-hoo. Mm-hmm. And granted, if they doesn't get the Wahoo correct, which it was a little iffy in that one trailer. Right. That's going to be a little awkward. But this just looks like it's going to be a fun movie that's pulling from like so many different sides. Mm-hmm. All these games have been so thematically different Mm -hmm. yeah that you really can't say this is the the games are this way the games are just fun and a little bit chaotic yeah you're not supposed to take them too terribly seriously yeah but anyway yeah so like uh there again this is our you know pre this is our pre-show yeah and i am extremely looking forward to this movie uh watching the trailers and play a little bit of gaming here there there i'm not i'm not a hardcore gamer like some people are 
Uh, they're gonna I don't know what you're talking about. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Looking at all your systems <laughs> right right there and I shot. <laughs> Considering I've beat Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Galaxy, most of Super Mario Sunshine. I actually haven't actually beat Super Mario 64 yet. That's just because that game is a lot more different than I'm, what I'm used to. But anyway. Right. But, yeah, I'm extremely looking forward to this movie. And just be, like, keeping an open, open mind with the, when it comes to what they're doing with the film. Yeah. And they're going to be like, I'm, I'm not as, like, heavily invested in the Super Mario, you know, video games and all that kind of stuff. Be like, I enjoy them for what they are. And I am extremely looking forward to this. And I, I guarantee there are going to be people out there who are going to hate this film because it's not what you know what the games were. And like you said before, yeah. it's, it's it's kind of a pointless point to bring up with a lot of people. But and I'm 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 hopeful this is a really good movie and that it does it's going to pull a lot of references, obviously. Oh yeah, and I'm looking forward to it mm, and to see and, see and how seeing it is. me going bonkers. Oh yeah, it's going to be if. If I was allowed to bring a camera in, I would just literally <laughs> just record Drew's reactions. Like, oh, my gosh. We'll, we'll probably talk about that when we get back. Oh, yeah. So uh, just as a fun fact, the average meta score on Metacritic right now for the movie is 47 out of 100, mm -hmm. while the user score is 8.6 out of 10. Huh. So this is one of those the critics hate, but everybody else loves. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's going to be interesting then. So, yeah. Not as a judge on critics, because we're critics, but... Yeah. Critics tend to be a little more looking for stuff that we're not looking for. That is true. Anyway, uh, do you have anything else before we go ahead and head that direction? No. I'd be like, again, I'm looking forward to watching this film. All right. Well, we'll throw the intermission bumpers in right here. We will see you on the other side after we've seen the movie. We'll talk to you then. This podcast is a proud member of Culture Box. Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. And we're back. Spoiler free first, of yeah. course. Yes, of course. What are your thoughts? This was one heck of a ride. <laughs> oh my gosh. So here we we had a little bit of a journey for this film. Yeah. So the we, first place we went was already sold out. Yeah, sold out, which is kind of rare for that that uh, cinema. So we drove to a uh, two town, three towns over. We went to we traveled about a half hour to where the next movie theater was. Yeah, and so we watched it there and had an amazing time. So my spoiler for thoughts is absolutely this is a fantastic film. It is wonderful. It is fun. It's got nostalgia written all over. It's dripping just gooey with it. Mm -hmm. And it is just a delight to watch. It's definitely worth a watch. Even if you like you don't have a like a firm foothold in the 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 Super Mario Nintendo world. Uh it is an enjoyable film from its writing to its cast to its um uh, cast of characters was amazing. If you have ever played a Super Mario Brothers game, go watch this film. Yes. If it shouldn't even already. be a question. Yes, I know you're thinking back to that live action Mario film from the night from 1993 and thinking how much of a tragic tragic film that is. Mm -hmm. This is not that film. No. This is we're no. taking literally what was in the games and making it work in a 3D cohesive story. We're taking memories that you had from uh, reading instruction booklets that were never really meant to be taken seriously and making that a canon story element mm -hmm. where it's it's a very fun, adventurous movie. Uh, and yeah, it's one I'm looking forward to listening to again. And it's probably the best soundtrack I've heard in a long time. And the fact that you downloaded the soundtrack since we got in your vehicle. <laughs> Uh, I was sitting in the theater oh. when I started downloading it. <laughs> well, never mind then. Yeah, it's like we're we're waiting for that last after uh, af uh, cr after credit scene. Mm -hmm. I was like, I bet I could download it now. <laughs> yep, and I did. So yeah, uh, but other than that, yeah, if you're on the fence about whether or not you should go watch the film, go watch it. Yes, I agree. it is a fun trip. Take your kids. Go by yourself. 
be aware that it's a Mario film. It's not going to be the super serious tone. It's going to be what you expect from a Mario game nowadays, mm -hmm. but told in a pretty decent environment. Um, they actually answered questions I think I'd had for a while now when it comes to Mario and some things, even though they could all change this by the next movie and no one would care. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think Jake, um, Jacob also did. Yes, I did. So yeah, if, uh, if you want to hear a spoiler free thoughts, hang around here in just a second and we will really get to spoiling these things like a mushroom gone bad. Or a blue mushroom. <laughs> Technically not a bad one. It just shrank them. Yeah, just shrank them. Anyway. <laughs> the following is a spoiler-filled reaction to the movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Listener discretion is advised. I just want to start with the Nintendo opening credit logo. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> because, okay, you know, you get the standard universal thing. It's like, okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. You get... Of course, Illuminations, which includes the Minions. Of course. And they're apparently... And the Minion is driving a cart. Of course. And he can't get it started. And then the Illumination logo kind of appears with the Super Mario Kart, you know, start your engines, start the race sound effect. And then you get this nice little 8-bit modern coloration Mario and Luigi come out and hit us question mark block to make it make the word in Nintendo appear, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is always my question when you have companies that don't normally have uh, the need for an animation animated logo where they actually yeah. have to make a movie mm -hmm. and they have to do something because they can't just have the logo appear and then go back down. Uh -huh. But anyway, that's all minor. Let's talk about the actual film. Granite, you missed about three seconds when you had to go back after your food. Yeah, I was. I was. Thankfully, you did not miss anything you hadn't seen in the trailer. Yes, because the the opening shot of this movie is exactly what you've seen in the, the, in the promos. Yeah, it's a little extended. Uh, it, it, it it takes longer to get through it, and because uh, it's really just setting the atmosphere. But uh -huh. uh, the the whole, okay, let's just. Break it down here. You got Bowser, who is wanting the, a, an invincibility star, because apparently they only know where one, a single one is. Yeah. In this time, uh, but he, he's that's his backup plan, because he wants to capture Princess Peach, not to capture her, but of course to marry her, just yeah. like in Super Mario Odyssey. Well, it was it was more be like he wanted to get the star to more like. Oh, here's the massive star. Be like, of course, this is gonna be impressive to you. Yes, and then you'll want like, to you'll, fall you'll in love, love with this. Me. Won't you love me, Princess Peach? Uh, it's like, <laughs> and I love how when they, he he finally explains that to the rest of the Koopa Koopa troop, and they're, they're like, like, what? what? <laughs> like, poof. Yes, it's like, well, you, you're not. You, you you think that's of course not. That's why I have the star. If you didn't marry me. Sorry. What if she says no? Well, then I'm going to take over the kingdom. I'm going to destroy everything. That's why I've got the stars. Like, okay, cool. Heart, play, continue playing your heavy metal rock that was probably performed by Tenacious D. I didn't look. <laughs> but should have oh, been. Oh my gosh, the, the, it was it was a great. Or, it it had such a great origin mm -hmm. to Mario Luigi. We get started with that very silly, very goofy commercial. Yes. That has been playing around for months now. And it's like, oh, they're the ones who created. They're the ones who spent right. all their money to do this. And it's just like everyone thinks they're a loser. And they're you know, like, you're dragging your brother into this, Mario. Why are you doing this? Well, and, and that's as, that is something we have to mention is that very early on, we get two cameos by Charles Martinet, the do. original voice actor for Mario. One is a character apparently named Giuseppe mm. who was playing the Jumpman arcade game. Oh, gosh. At the, I am not kidding here, folks, Punch-Out Pizzeria. And yes, there are pictures of all the Punch-Out people, <laughs> except for Mr. Dream, because they probably thought that may have been a bit of a push, considering that sprite was just a recolor of the Mike Tyson version, mm -hmm. and they probably would have to pay money for that, that one. That probably but would. I understand that. But, uh... Yeah, and then also Mario's dad, yeah, is played by Charles Martinet. Right. Yes, which considering he he pretty much says, 
uh, it's horrible you do this to your it's horrible to leave a, a steady job to go follow chase your dreams uh, mario and, and what's worse is you're bringing is you're bringing your your brother along uh bringing your brother down with it and then mario just walks up it's like mario you just told yourself how horrible it was to chase dreams what are you doing <laughs> just say I'm just I, I agree. saying. I agree, but, but it's it, it's such a good it's, setup it's a, to who our characters are, right? And and if you're going to have a cameo by the original voice actor, that's actually a good place to put it. Agreed. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot that takes place in the Brooklyn section, uh, except for what happens with the dog. Oh gosh, the dog, <laughs> the dog. Oh. So to, for for so for this setup. The, the brothers are kind of down and out, be like, they haven't got a call yet. They get a call. Yes. It's in this big apartment. And it's like, oh, we got a leak. And apparently, Luigi steps on the dog's bone, and the dog is now furious to the point that he wants yes. to murder them, too. <laughs> well, I, I like that part. The, the dog is licking his owner's face, and she says, oh, look, he likes you. And then Luigi steps on the bone, oh. and I literally <laughs> said right next to you, now he doesn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And now the dog's in a murderous ram is going to murder the Mario Brothers for breaking yes. his bone, and oh, that whole sequence was funny. Oh, it was so good. Yes, this is set just little setup mm -hmm. here and there, here and there, here and there, and it's it was so good. It was yeah. so good. And, and, and then, was, um, of course, that goes about as well as he you probably assumed. Uh, and then after you know. Uh, Charles Martinet tells Mario, don't follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. And Mario goes sulks in his room playing Kid Icarus. <laughs> My gosh. Uh, they then, Mario happens to see a report on TV about mm -hmm. how the, Brooklyn is flooding. And guess who else we get a cameo there from? Mayor Pauline, the original uh, uh, damsel in distress from, from Donkey Kong. Really? Yes, it's, it's, her, it's her modern uh, version of her. Really, from Super Mario Odyssey is who it's based off of. But that's supposed to be who that is is uh, the original damsel in distress from Donkey Kong. Gotcha. And uh, while they're down there fixing it, Luigi accidentally finds a baked green pipe. Yes. And then Mario ha follows after him, ch chases after him to try and figure out what happened to him. Then he gets sucked down that pipe, and uh -huh. they end up in the Mushroom Kingdom. Um. I know we're not going step by step through no, this. It's just no, it, no. it's easier to hit this at the beginning because from here, oh, you get you, it's let's let's talk about Mushroom Kingdom because this is where my little Italian heart that I don't actually have <laughs> my little plumber heart, I guess. I yeah. don't know. Uh, this is where the, the kid in me who's been playing Mario since he was like two or three years old <laughs> sees is like in in like nerd heaven for a bit uh-huh because we're going through like uh the, the, the this main castle town and it's like oh my word look at all the stinking cameos of stuff yeah just everywhere like everywhere just you look picking everything from yes. like all, all the different games and what's and really cool about it is if you're listening to the music you can't really it's a little hard to hear in the movie itself mm -hmm. but i've since i have the soundtrack and i've listened to part of it already mm -hmm. The song that plays there is a medley of every single opening world tune in the Mario franchise. Wow, I'm not I surprised. think the only one I didn't hear was Super Mario Brothers 2's opening uh, level one theme. Sure. I think that's the only one I didn't hear, which makes sense. It's not even technically originally a Mario game. But, uh, and of course, it ends with the, with the castle theme from uh, Super Mario 64. Yeah. Princess Peach's Castle. So, I mean, it's like, Oh, all this cool stuff in the castle looks good. Uh, I was not sure how I'd feel about Peach. And admittedly, at the beginning, I was a little worrisome because I couldn't pin down her character. Okay. At first, because it's like, okay, are you, you're going to go and save uh, uh, the Toads by going and talking to the, the Jungle Kingdom, which is, no. of course, the Donkey Kongs. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you seem a little too chipper, I guess is the word. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I really didn't get a good feel for her character until, you know, she's actually get to the whole uh, 
the scene, uh, the the trial scene where she's putting Mario through everything. Yeah. I really didn't get a feel for her. Up to that point, it's like she had some, like weird looks on her face. It was kind of animated oddly. Mm. Not not real, real oddly, yeah. admittedly, but just like, mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how this is going to work. She's This seems a little thin. Yeah. I guess that's really what it comes down to. It felt a little thin on her performance at first, but then I kind of got or got used to it and it worked. Okay. Anyway, I've been talking a bit. What are your thoughts? No, uh, <laughs> can I go back to my original point? Be I love the like Mario's journey as a hero. Be mm-hmm. like he's the the guy who's trying to live live his dreams, <laughs> and he's obviously not succeeding at first. Yeah, and then he, um, you know, being the the short the short guy, but is has these great ambitions and he he wants to do the right thing and he's a very heroic character yeah and he winds up getting himself pulled into another world where he has to save the world and uh he's he's the uh the character who steps up and never quits and never Mm -hmm. gives up and uh there again that that kind of character arc is inspired because he grows as a character yeah be like literally yeah he grows literally and be like he's separated from his brother and Mm -hmm. he finds you know that that meaning i have to get find my brother again and it is just a, it is a wonderful story, so well done. Yeah, you, you have uh, you have Bowser as voiced by Jack Black, which I was like, that's Jack Black. <laughs> I was well, I, I was I was halfway expecting the guy who's like, wow, the crazy about everything. Mm-hmm. He kind of was. But what was interesting is you can tell the animators watched like oh yeah. video of Jack Black recording the audio oh, because yeah. there are expressions on Bowser's face that are Jack Black expressions. Yes, agreed. Uh, and this is probably kind of this is a little true, I think, of everyone uh, uh, except for maybe Peach. I'm not sure on her, but yeah. But there's so many. As a Mario fan, there's so many like references to so many things. I mean, there's more than I could count. Yeah. Uh, the way the power ups worked here made perfect sense. Oh yeah. Speaking of the power ups, let's talk about the fact that apparently Mario doesn't like the taste of mushrooms. Oh, that was hysterical. <laughs> Definitely like, during the train montage. <laughs> well, I mean, at the very beginning, it's like, oh, really, mushrooms? I don't like the taste of mushrooms. I'm thinking, well, you're in for a big surprise. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Yeah. And then you it's know, like, during oh, the, just eat it. During the training <laughs> montage, you know, Princess Peach gives him one. It's like, does it have to be a mushroom? Could it be anything else? <laughs> and he eats so many during that training montage, he doesn't really care the rest of the film. <laughs> right. <laughs> And speaking of power ups, like the the point where they have to go to the the uh, the the for, the forest kingdom, <laughs> the forest and, kingdom, and the they get into the, what, the Smash Brothers stage. Yeah, <laughs> if or, that's not released at, as a Smash Brothers stage at some point, y'all are not thinking correct clearly. Yeah, but it was this be like obviously we saw this in the trailer. Yeah, but it was so clever because they they because all the power ups obviously in the games, but they expand it a little bit here in the movie. Where it's like he gets the cat suit and everybody's laughing or like, it's like right. oh it looks so to use the cat and then it's just like so genius how they like oh he actually moves like a cat he, he can beat donkey yeah that <laughs> which that's, is absolutely hysterical I was, loved it that was the point of the cat suit in the game when it was originally put out it's like yeah he moves like a cat so he yeah. can do things a cat would okay like extend his claws and scratch yes. you up pretty good oh my gosh that was hysterical yeah <laughs> I, I was i was but before that yeah before, before he got the cat suit the first one he tried oh yeah the blue was the mini mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> which turns you tiny <laughs> that was great that was great and uh, that's the other thing there uh the the song that comes when he, Donkey Kong play comes out mm-hmm. is the is the DK rap from Donkey Kong 64. It's only the Donkey Kong part of it, but oh my god! And then there's so many cameos from like uh, uh, we, you could see Diddy, Dixie, and Lanky Kong in mm-hmm. the in the audience, and of course Cranky Kong was playing the, uh-huh. was the King Kong. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, doing yeah. so much never to say the King Kong. Kong. Yes. <laughs> but it's because Nintendo and Universal are, have some ish, history along, around that name. And yet this was released by Universal. <laughs> That's what's hilarious. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, my favorite part of this, when they get their carts, of course. Carts, oh my gosh. Princess yes. Peach has a motorcycle. Makes sense. It's- you want to show her off in her uh track suit that she wears mm-hmm. when riding a motorcycle in Mario Kart. Mario Kart Mario is of course got his 
standard uh, standard car M mm-hmm. that he uh, it's his uh, m- main cart from the exactly. games. Toad has a giant monster truck. <laughs> Overcompensating much? <laughs> I can't blame the guy. Okay, of course. <laughs> Where they're going, I cannot blame the guy. But the part that I love, the whole, and of course, you can see this in the trailer too. But I don't care. <laughs> they are powering down this. Uh, this this road between these waterfalls, Mario sees that there's the road ends uh-huh. in an obvious ramp, and says, "Hey, the, the road's in." And then Craig Young says, "Well, then perhaps you should uh, you should speed up." And so he does, and Mario just shoots ahead, and they lands right on Rainbow Road, and they play the Rainbow Road Mario sixty four song. <laughs> it's a hot second. I go, oh, I know which one that is. <laughs> There again, I wish I could have brought brought a camera in or just video create because it was so good. That was because I'm sitting there going, "Please play this. Please play Rainbow Road. Please play Rainbow Road. Please play Rainbow Road." I don't care which Rainbow Road you play, but play Rainbow Road. Do 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 do. It's Rainbow Road sixty four. Oh my god, dude, dude, I gotta, I gotta say, like, whenever, whenever you nerd out, it's absolutely. It is so fun to see you nerd out about stuff. And then I'm like, I'm going, zing, what's going on, man? It's just but it's, what it's, happens. It's, 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 so, it's, it's fun. Because I get I, excited, funny. okay? I agree. I, I, my little 12-year-old doesn't get a chance to come out often. Fair. Fair. But this was one of those times. I was like, it's Rainbow Road. This, and it's the good song. It's the best one. Uh, anyway. Oh, my God. Backing off. Yeah, uh, no, you're uh, fine. You're fine. Uh, yeah, this, and uh, I love how uh, we got to talk about how Luigi gets caught it, with the Luigi's Mansion music yes, playing. Yes, <laughs> and then he gets caught by sh- uh, a couple of shy guys as a sniffets. Which good night that shot when he's in the mansion. You think it's safe, and the lightning strikes, oh, and you yeah. see just the masks back there. <laughs> it's like holy crap! There's kids watching this. Why are you scaring them? You spooked the crap out of me. <laughs> He, th- he spoke he, the be like they spooked the inner child. Yes, and then uh, they carry the Sniffits and and the shy guys take him off to, to Bowser, and Bowser throws him into this uh, oh gosh prison cell, oh. and yeah, get the blue Luma who has apparently gone insane mm-hmm. from being captured so long, <laughs> and everybody hates this thing. <laughs> it's like please shut up, we're all depressed anyway. <laughs> so great there is no release until the until the sweet release of death (laughs) you're all going to be sacrificed at at, at, at the wedding between peach and bowser mercy has come (laughs) (laughs) oh you sweet sweet child you have seen horrible things oh my gosh but princess rosalina's got a lot of work to do to get you back to normal Oh yeah, this this movie is so well done. Be like it has there again. Be like if you're the Nintendo nerd, the Mario nerd, be like you're gonna get ever you're gonna see references. You'll probably go back and watch it again to get more references. And then just like the, the, for the the movie buff. Oh yeah, like, and I guarantee there's probably reviewers like, well, it's too predictable, whatever. But Who cares? It, it's it is so it's a, much it's fun. It's a fun movie. I, I I get that this is not going to win any critics over no. who are just who are wanting these you know very specific things. Uh-huh. I just went in and enjoyed myself. It was mm-hmm. a fun. It was a kids. It was a fun movie. Yes, it's a kids movie, but it's knows and it's playing to an audience that has been playing these games of course for thirty five years. Yeah. No, sorry, Donkey Kong. That was eighty three, nearly forty years nearly now. 40 years. Yeah, forty years. It knows who its years. audience is, and yeah. it is playing to its audience. Oh yeah, and it's doing a good job of it. It is. Is all the acting on point? No, I'll admit most of this is most of the acting is not how I interpret the characters in my mind. Of course, Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong is okay. Yeah, uh, whoever it was who played Cranky Kong. He was not cranky to me. I'm sorry. He wasn't cranky enough. He was he he was not berating Donkey Kong for for all the easy stuff in his games. Mm. Anyway, cranky is funny in the in Donkey uh, Kong Country, because uh, 
he's the original Donkey mm, Kong. Gotcha. From the from the from the arcade game. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's always talking about how back in my day we didn't have uh, extra lives. We you just had to keep feeding quarters into the machine in order to feed or whatever it was. But anyway, yeah, the movie was fun. Was That's so what fun. I have to say. I I want I, there's so much I could just ramble on about of that I am to the rambling part where I'm like very close to talking nonsense. Yes. <laughs> So like overall, be like you have this like Bowser's motivation is so great because you think be like oh I just want to destroy the kingdom but no he really wants to marry uh, which has been Peach, which is part of the games for years I understand that yeah <laughs> and it's so it's like we it's, even get Bowser in his wedding suit from Mario Odyssey <laughs> and he is using the same but that's the that's, that's the thing. Both the bouquets that we see, both the mm. one he had with the, with the piranha plants in it, yeah. and the one she eventually carries out there that was hiding the ice flower, yeah. which I'm going to talk about that part in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Those are both the bouquets from Super Mario Odyssey. Really? Yes. One was the one that Bowser was was trying to give her at the end, and the other was the one Mario tried to give her. Oh, and my And she God. said no to both of them and went off and decided to, to journey up by herself. Oh, my and God. Said, and said, uh, P U D U two. I don't want to deal with y'all right now, <laughs> but uh, let's talk about Princess Elsa Peach. Oh my gosh! <laughs> because yes. the minute she, I saw. Oh, it's an ice flower. Oh, oh. wait. There, how long till someone till she says, you know, Bowser? I, uh, I'm never gonna marry you, so you should just let it go. No. It's like I was waiting for that line because that would have been so stinking perfect. Yes, it would have because she looked like a Nintendified version of Elsa. Elsa <laughs> because it turned her wedding dress blue, blue. <laughs> with white at the bottom, oh. just like Elsa. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Just have a uh, Princess Daisy come in as Anna, and we'll be in we'll, we'll be in good shape. I don't know how you do pull that off, but still. <laughs> Oh man, but this this was great. This was a great movie where it was like the point where Bowser is like, "Oh my gosh, you rejected me! I'm gonna destroy your kingdom!" Launches the the the, the bonsai bill, the bonsai bill, <laughs> and, and it, this bonsai bill does something no other bonsai bill in Mario has ever done. And I want a part of me wants to say that's not how that works, and the other part that says I don't flipping care that that's not how that works. <laughs> This bonsai bill gets launched out and is going to uh, is being aimed directly at Peach's castle. Mario is able to get it to stop doing that by mm. poking it in its eye. Or, no, no, Light. he uses the tanuki suit or yeah, the, the raccoon tail suit to, wipe to, to to get get fur in his eye. Uh huh. And right, and it stops just before it attacks, and then turns towards Mario and starts chasing him. <laughs> and Mario takes it to the warp pipe he came into. And I thought when I saw this, like, oh, he's going to sacrifice his way back home uh-huh. so that he'll be forced to stay here. That makes sense from a story point of view. Uh-huh. That explains why they're in the Mushroom Kingdom if they ever make a se- need to make a sequel to this, which I think they should. Uh-huh. Nope, that's not what happens. Yes, the, the, the pipe gets destroyed. Yes, the bullet bill gets transferred to the weird space in between. But apparently that caused the direct... Uh, uh, some sort of connection to cause everything to get pulled yeah. into it. And they all end up in Brooklyn. That was hysterical. <laughs> Which I love the part where Foreman Spike is berating Luigi for uh, stopping in front of his uh, car. Yeah, his truck. His truck. <laughs> and he's going over this. And all of a sudden you see the giant Bowser lava pit th- uh, mm. castle immediately you show up in brooklyn and it's like spike has nothing more to say he just leaves he just leaves he get like, anything. i'm getting out of here he stole my wrecking jobs anyway <laughs> oh my god oh this was so much fun. such a good movie such a worth the time and, to watch it and i am i i love that yes luigi was caught for most of this yes there was a point where princess peach was the damsel in distress yeah. that Mario was would eventually have to go save. Mario and Luigi would have to go save. But I love the fact that at the end, it's not Mario by like, himself that defeats both. Bowser. It's not Luigi. It is both of them. Which was a good scene. Which was a great scene. I knew what they were going to do the minute I saw both of them 
reach out towards the inv- invincibility star. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Yes. <laughs> and it is. It is excellent. Yes. And then <laughs> Bowser gets force fed a mini mushroom <laughs> and they put him in a like, jar. Oh, no. Not that. Not that. <laughs> See, princess, I told you I'd get you a pet turtle when you came to Brooklyn. (laughs) That is the best one-liner. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Oh my gosh. And then there were two after-credits scenes. Yes. One with, because apparently Bowser plays piano. This is the first we've seen this. (laughs) And he's got interesting and the, and they uh he, he's playing his his, his peaches song. his peaches song and peach, the toast peach, peach, hey peach, peach, peach. hey uh, hey lights out uh uh you're you're, you're being annoying and they and it turns the lights off and that's the end of that scene it's like hey do you know who i am <laughs> oh then we had the yoshis yeah the, and the, the yoshis in the middle of the movie yes it's like oh cool we're on yoshi's island and you even hear the yoshi's island music really with there from a. Uh, uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Okay. And then, at the very end, we see that the Yoshi egg that was at the wedding gifts table... That's right. ...was still in, in the, the sewers. sewers. And, and we, then it cracks and he... Yoshi! And, yep, we get to hear... Uh, I, gotta, uh, to, I gotta think of that guy's name. Hang on. Because it's actually the original voice actor. Really? I, I could tell when I heard it. Oh, uh, okay. Because that, I think it's just the sound effect mm-hmm. that they probably have on file probably but uh hang on uh kazumi totaka that is kazumi totaka's voice oh as yoshi at the end nice yeah that was i mean like it's a good movie it is so well it is so worth watching uh, if you're, I mean, like with, if you love animation, Nintendo, oh, whatever, yeah. go watch this movie. It is so worth it in every fashion or form. It's just a fun, fun movie. Yes. I am looking forward to what has to be a sequel at some point. Yeah. And I don't know which, so that's the thing. When we finished Sonic the Hedgehog 1, I called. You did. You did call What it. the sequel was going to be. I'm s- sitting here trying to think what sequel would they go with with Mario. And the thing is, unlike Sonic, where there is a kind of a story you can mm-hmm. go with, Mario doesn't work that way. True. Now, granted, since we do see Yoshi at the end, and it's hinting that Yoshi's going to be a major part of the next movie, mm-hmm. I could see maybe them having to do a, Yoshi, a, a Super Mario World kind of shtick. Maybe. But I don't know if that's what they do. I mean, it'd, it'd obviously be heavily modified, just like this is kind of sort of based on Super Mario Brothers 1. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Ex- yeah. Um, uh, very, very loosely and with throwing in reference to everything else. Right. Well, really, every th- really, it's based on, on Donkey Kong <laughs> and Super Mario Brothers <laughs> yes. and Super Mario Kart. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Don't forget Super Mario Kart. Those yes. are fun scenes. Oh. The, the the fact he'd be like, uh, Bowser may be little, but uh, he probably will break out. Yeah. Probably. He probably he's will. Bowser. He probably will. He, I could see him uh, capturing Princess Peach, and then Mario has to go after him, and he starts in, Dino- in, in on Yoshi's Island. And then you get Yoshi. And yes, when he'll get Yoshi, and we'll probably meet the Koopalings. In the next Probably. one, because there was actually a, a, a reference there was. to one of the Koopalings. The piano that Bowser yeah. was playing said Ludwig von Koopa on it. Oh, okay. Which is one of the of the seven Koopalings. Oh, and so speaking of singing, uh, so Bowser and his his uh, that, his love melody to Princess Peach. Oh, my gosh. So that was just Jack Black having fun. They didn't even bother putting the Bowser sound of sound effect thing over uh-huh. it and they kind of did because they do mess with his voice to make it more of a bowserish mm-hmm. growl to it growl but you really can't do that with the song so it's just jack black singing in a deeper tone which is absolutely pitched down a little bit hysterical oh my yes. gosh peaches, so good. Peaches, 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 peaches 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 it's like you know, so that's, laughing a, your that's head a weird off. thing from the games. It's never made sense as to why Bowser is in love with Princess Peach and wants to marry her, except it's just kind of a thing that happens. Yes. Anyway, 
Do you yeah. have anything else to add before no, we, put, this we finish is, this tonight? This is such a good movie. Yeah. And I, I can't wait to fully review it. Oh, yeah. This is definitely going to be one we're going to fully review at mm-hmm. some point. And I'm really, like I said, I really hope we do get a sequel. Nintendo Illumination, get on that stuff. Because good night, if you can, if you can run Despicable Me into the ground with five sequels, give Mario some love. Give. I want to see the ep- the movie where you have to dig dig deep into Princess Rosalina's backstory, which is a character you don't even know who I'm talking about. I know. I know of of the character. I don't know who the character is. Well, according to one. Uh, uh theorist on on the internet mm. he is a he is she is the daughter of luigi i sent heard, back I've, in time i've heard this <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the, the way it plays out in the game it does reference that her father had a mustache oh gosh <laughs> it's supposed to be mario in the game because she's supposed to be i think because she she kind of has that princess peach look to her mm-hmm but she still talks about her father in the book. And so it's supposed to be like, this is the daughter of Mario and Princess Peach who had to go back in time for some reason. Uh. Except <laughs> it, one theorist says, oh, no, it's Luigi. It's like, okay, if you say so. Anyway, but that's Anyways. just a theory. A game theory. I just kind of gave it away who it was. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it here. If you're, yeah, if just you're thinking, yeah, go watch the film. It's a great film. In the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Jacob. And uh, we'll catch you at the next pipe. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at GGeorge759. His Twitter at GGeorge759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast. On Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming. On YouTube at Cellcast. On Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts. Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L.